Let's see. Like, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> It's been Damn, and nobody sent me a message and nobody told me. All right. You're good now. I am. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I'm four minutes late, but I'm technically not four minutes late. We were live, but we were live on my personal account. And none of, none of you told me. Well, are all, all of them on your personal account? No, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's on my personal account. Well, there's some that were on my personal account, and none of you told me that I went live on my personal and not on Friday Night Fights. Welcome. Welcome. It's been a long day. <laughs> I didn't even get, like, an inbox. Like, hey. Wrong account. Because <laughs> they might have been like, they did like, not realize. They just saw it and clicked. Yeah, they probably did. I'm like, what's going on? Clicky, clicky, clicky. What's going on here? <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Fights. I'm Zal. I'm Wendy. <laughs> um, I just love it. It's all right. So this show is not intended for kids younger than 18 due to language, drugs, content. Pick your poison. Basically, it's not for kids. Mm -hmm. um, Unless you allow it, we don't own your children. True story. True story. Uh, what else? I We're not sponsored by anybody. Everything that we do, everything that we buy, it's us. If you want to sponsor us, let us know. We, we do advertisements too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yep, can yep. shout out your business if you like. Tonight we're gonna start the show with a shot of E and J Peach. I went with Peach today because I need like a summer vibe going on. I'm in a funk because of the weather. So You're missing that vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> the sun heifer. <laughs> the sun. She's she is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let us know what you're taking a shot of tonight. Cheers. Um, our mixologist, tell us what we're drinking today. Crown Royale Peach Tea. It is made from Crown, Crown Royale, I don't know where. <laughs> Canadian whiskey. We're doing it smooth today. We didn't really want to do anything much, so. It's not Cheers. like the weather's any better. I know, it was just so dreary. I was driving in it, and I thought it was gonna be really bad, like icy, but it wasn't. They said it was mostly gonna hit the Poconos. Oh wow. Like up that area, the higher up. Uh, let us know what you're drinking, cheers. Kind of smooth. I'm like, it's all right. Yeah, it's not like pow, pow. All right, let's go to our first topic. Pretty people problems. Is there such a thing? There is such a thing. I know there, is. there is such a thing. I was looking it up on, you know, I'm the Google queen. So a lot of people have um, this issue that they encounter it, and it hinders a lot in their daily life. I mean, I don't have that problem. Me neither. I guess I'm average Joe. I'm okay with being plain Jane. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. Pilat Grigio. <laughs> Someone's been hitting that one a little too hard because I'm pretty sure it's not Pilot. <laughs> Stop drinking as of right now. <laughs> Pilot? <laughs> <laughs> we love you. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. Um, it kind of, number one, the one thing that it did hit me a lot, though, uh, pretty people problems. Uh -huh. um, people look at you and they automatically judge you. Whether you're pretty or not, I feel like that's just... That is, but if you're really pretty, they automatically assume you're conceited. That's the one thing that hit me a lot. I think what happens is... It's not they assume you're conceited. If like if you're confident, that confidence comes off as conceited to someone that's insecure about themselves. You know that is true. Because if you're not used to being confident, 
We need to get on her level. <laughs> she put pilot, I'm flying. <laughs> but yeah, it comes off as if you're conceited and you're not. You're just, you're very pretty. You're pretty and it's it stands out. You're confident. You have that because you're pretty. Um, also, people don't take you serious. I don't know if um, you guys got to see the reel I made. Um, you're confident. You're... People at work, people at work, because you're pretty, they don't take you serious. It depends on what job profession it is. Because um, when I worked at the bank, the first thing they told me right off, they were like, they try to hire only pretty people for tellers. Why? Because you're seem, you're seem more approachable, like more amicable. Like, it sounds weird because you would think like, oh, she's pretty. She's probably going to be standoffish. But people are attracted to pretty, so they want to come up to you. So banks will try hire pleasant looking tellers so that. That's why I didn't get the job. <laughs> I'm just You're kidding. Stupid. Yeah, I never went to apply at a bank. <laughs> but, like, that's, like, um, it's not just banks. There's, like, a few professions that they'll go out, like, secretaries. Yeah, they want them confident, but they also want them to look pleasant because people will gear towards a pleasant-looking person as opposed to someone who's not. Salons do that, too. A lot of salons, they want to get pretty people because they feel like, if they're pretty, people would want to go there. And if you're ugly, I'm sorry, a salon's not going to help you. Well, think about it. If you're going to a salon, brand new, you've never been, <laughs> and you see your hairstylist looking raggedy as shit, you're going to have to do your hair. Because you're going to be like, if she can't do her own hair, why the fuck is she going to do mine? <laughs> so, unfortunately, and you know how they say sex sells? So does appearance. That is true. Um, what was the other thing? A lot of people as well. There was one There was one thing. I think it was like number two on there. It says if you're a pretty person. And when we say pretty, we're not referring only to women. Because there's a lot of men who are very pretty. And when we say pretty, we refer to handsome as well. But pretty can be okay. referred to as men. Now that you say pretty for men. I pretty. I want to say it's Korean men. But have you seen some of them? Like, it is real, like, not handsome, like, really pretty. So I'm like, holy shit. They are. Like, holy shit. Like, their facial is just so feminine. And I think that's what it is, because pretty is associated with feminine. So it's just like, holy shit. I, I have no problem saying a man is very pretty. He's very pretty. They are. Because pretty, pretty. pretty does not, it doesn't identify as a woman. It can identify as a man. But men take it offensive if you call them pretty. I, I mean, maybe it's subconscious, but I do associate pretty with a feminine. Not like it has to be geared towards women, but if it's more pe feminine, that's why I'm like, there's pretty men. Because it means you have some feminine characteristics or traits that I associate with pretty. Now, if you are rugged or what, I'm say handsome, because I'm not going to say a rugged man is pretty. Like, that doesn't make sense. No, I would say he's rugged. He's, you know, handsome. handsome. Lumberjack. Yeah. Um, what other things, um, they denying them certain things. Um, I was reading, I was reading a, uh, an article. They, uh, denied entrance to a park because a girl was too pretty. Mind you, she had a, it was a water park. Okay. So she had a crop top. She was very pretty. She had makeup on. They denied her entrance to a water park because she was too pretty. And that's the reason they gave her? Yeah, she showed the picture of herself. She had cut off no, jeans. No, I'm saying, like, what did the company itself say? Like, that, like I, I don't know. This was her take. This was it. her take because they interviewed her. They didn't interview the water park itself because they had no comment. But her, her response was... She was too pretty to enter the water park. Now, mind you, the picture that they showed um, on the news, she had a regular crop top on. Like, it was a water park. Like, I don't know if they wanted her to wear, like, a full one piece. But other other guests at the water park, they didn't have a one piece. They had a two piece on. And she was very pretty. Like, I have no problem at all saying when somebody's pretty. Sometimes I don't even know people. And I'll be like, you're so pretty. Because I just do that. Sometimes it comes off sometimes weird but hey it is what it is um but they denied her entrance 
and told her she had to go back out and put something else on. And she told them, she was like, but there's other people with like a two piece on. And they told her, no, she couldn't come in. I mean, I'm pretty sure her being pretty did and help the situation, but I'm wondering if it has something to do with the fact like, um, I don't want to say liability for the company because it's not a liability, but if there were like safety issues. Like, like safety what? Her boob would pop out of her two piece, but there was other two pieces. No, I'm not talking there. about her boob popping out of the two piece. It sounds fucked up, but what if someone tries to kidnap her or, you know, rape her, like it sounds horrible. Like, it, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't, unless we reach out to you the know company what? I should What I should have done, I should have posted. And I didn't think about it because I just didn't have the time. Um, I was just reading it so quickly. Um, I should have posted like her full picture and it didn't seem anything out of the normal like somebody else was wearing yeah pretty comes with gifts and curse sounds like you know from experience <laughs> are you pretty do you consider yourself pretty do you consider yourself pretty or pretty ugly which one or do you consider yourself having a gift or a curse we want to know talk to us it's a lot of questions answer them all yeah We're waiting Come on, it's not, it's easy. Sun, sun. Anyway, um, but what other, um, so I, one thing I have noticed, like my personal, whatever, is that when someone is too pretty, like if, depending on what profession you are, other women will hate on you, hate on you, but it make they, like if your boss, if you're prettier than your boss or whatever, and they feel like you're getting, you could have worked for it. Not saying that you didn't get a promotion or whatever. Like, you worked the bust of your ass and you got the promotion and they feel like they deserved it or whatever. They're going to like be like, oh, it's because she's pretty or they like her or blah, blah, blah. They don't acknowledge your hard work because they just... They and, that's, and that's pretty messed up. It is, but unfortunately, it's the way of the world. Now, what if you have a friend who's... I know this is pretty messed up, but... It is what it is. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you. Someone in my family... Ooh. I'm not going to tell you who. Ooh. Always gave me... <laughs> I'm going to give you... Gave me the um, advice. <laughs> Hold on. Um, to make sure my friends were always uglier than me. So you'd be the pretty one of the Yes. Day. Yes. Did you get that advice too no. growing up? You know what advice I got? Be careful of your female friends. My grandmother used to tell me this younger, and she still tells me this to this day. She'd be like, your female friends are always jealous of you. Be careful of them. And, like, I literally was just on the phone with her last week, and she was like, Wendy, I don't think you're meant to have female friends. You just need to give it up. See, no. My mother, my mother always told me the only advice I got from my mom was to make sure that the person I was dating was ugly. That way I'd never have to fight over him. <laughs> No, but I got other advice from another family member to make sure that my friends were always ugly so that I'd always be the pretty one to stand out in the group. But that's not the case because all my friends are very beautiful because I don't have that problem. I was like, mm. I'd rather be the ugly one in the group. I don't, I'm, I don't care for attention. Yeah. So I'm like, no, you see, for someone else to get it. The difference with me is my confidence when I walk in the room will always bring attention to me because I walk in with some damn confidence that you would never know that I think I'm average Joe. It depends on who I'm, I don't want to say it depends on who I'm with because I just be having a fucking blast and in my own world, I really do be in my own world. Like I could go with a group of 20 and I just, <laughs> in my world. No, pretty ugly. It comes with gifts, gifts and curses too. <laughs> so what gifts do you get with being pretty ugly? Because I'm like, huh, I didn't even know there was a gift I I, there, yeah, guess, there are yeah, gifts. There you want to know why? Because you if you're the both. pretty ugly one in the group, the girls always gravitate to your friends instead of you. And you're like, damn, why can't they come to me? Why? Because you're pretty ugly. That's not a gift. That's a curse. Exactly. Yeah, but I said a gift. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll shut up on that one. You got friends on all the fucking time. That's a curse too. <laughs> that is a curse. They're gonna be like, they gotta come to you thinking you're approachable. Talking about, oh, hey, then they're going to no, like, yo, you want to know what the gift is? Is that when they're fighting with your friend, they're always going to come to you for to be consoled, and you could be like, oh. Oh, shit, my hand slipped and touched your boob. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. I can't give that out. I just gave it out. I just gave it out. I know that's what you're thinking. Boom. I just gave out one of the gifts. 
But, um, no. You, you um, always get the second plate. <laughs> I think what's pretty, it's the whole dumb thing. I think it has more, and it sounds fucked up, so if you're a blonde, I'm sorry. I think it's more associated with pretty blondes. Like, yeah. you don't hear that really for, like, pretty brunettes or pretty redheads and stuff. Yeah. Like, the dumb things really come with the pretty blondes. Yeah, be- well, because it's always that stereotypical. It is. That it comes with. It's but then it's the only leverage I got. I knew it. I knew it. How did I know it? But um, with everything else, it's like if you're pretty, like it doesn't matter how much or how long or how hard you work. Everything's just like, oh, she got it because she was pretty. Or, or even he, if you're in corporate America, if you're pretty, you're always going to get labeled as if you're dumb. And you're not dumb. I feel like that's not always true. Like, it, it, depending, again, what profession you're in. Let me just say, um, I'm not bringing political into this at all. So, please. Um, Trump's daughter. Mm-hmm. She's she's pretty. Ivana? Yeah. Um, she went to school, and she is very smart. And she's pretty. But because, well, it could I think be, it's because she's Trump's daughter. I was just going to say, that, was maybe, a bad, that was maybe a bad example I put. She's she's very pretty, but a lot of people label her dumb. And you also have to keep into place. It sounds horrible, but when it comes to like corporate America, ageism. Because if you're too young, they just assume you're stupid because you don't have the experience. Right. So you could be pretty, but they could be just completely judging you because of your age. Right. Because they think you don't have the experience or you don't know enough or haven't been alive long enough to deal with it. So they don't trust your opinion. So on top of being pretty, now you're age, now you're dumb. Automatically. Boom, you're done. And it's not, and it, it's so sad because you don't have, um, you don't have the capability to determine your genes. If you come from a very pretty mom, a, a pretty dad, you're automatically pretty. So you're automatically I mean, there's a, a few couples that have some beautiful kids, so. That is true. Okay. So let's, let me rephrase that. You have an ugly mom, an ugly dad. And now you're pretty, you're automatically labeled dumb with ugly ass parents. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I know very well. So I think, okay. You better stop. <laughs> you better stop. <laughs> oh, shit. But, um... but it, to finish off this topic, there, there's so much else that we can talk about because there was 15 things, just 15 like main things. As I kept Googling, there was so much more that could be said um about being pretty and being labeled stereotyped it's sad it's oh, sad it is um thank and god on like average it i and i it sounds horrible not to say men don't experience it because some of them do but they this do. is more pertains to women mm-hmm. like when the outcome of them being pretty isn't as obvious as when it's to a woman because with a man you know what they say it's a man's world i don't fucking know what that's saying but um, another man is not going to be like, oh, he's too pretty or too handsome. He's going to be um, a threat to me. So, right. no, that a female will quickly hold that over you like, ooh, you know what? You don't, you don't match what we're looking for. You're not what we want. Like, they'll find any excuse because they feel threatened by you. And that's just based on appearance sometimes. The other thing I did want to add before we close off this topic, if you're pretty... Now, let's just add if you have a body, a killer body to add to that. Forget it. You're done. But, Sweatpants and hoodies all the time. No, that's so bad because that's bad. I wear, I don't wear sweatpants because it's not a lot, but I do wear leggings and hoodies all the time. Like, I, I no lie. I love leggings. I do too. But I literally look like I just rolled out of bed or I'm going to the gym. That's how I go to work. Like, I look like complete and utter shit. Now, and I do that on purpose, not because I'm worried about people being Ooh. threatened. It's just the first thing most people notice on me is an attention I don't like. Yeah. And that's a shame. That's a shame. If you're very pretty, if you're beautiful, let's just not get into that subject because we just don't have the time. So if you're pretty and you have a body, you're automatically stereotyped right off the bat. I feel like it's worse for um, minority women too. Because it sounds horrible. Because um, if we're assertive, we're deemed as aggressive too, or too oh, full yeah. of ourselves. Yes. It's not confident. We become we come off as cocky and aggressive. Yes. If we're too assertive, so like not only do we have to like try to 
level the playing field and like dumb ourselves down and try to watch our tone and try not to be too pretty because then we get sexualized. We have way too much shit trying to juggle just to make it in corporate America. Yeah, I do agree with that. I've been called aggressive several times. And mind you, I'm in QA and I've had to explain several times. I am not aggressive. I am compassion. I have a lot of, um, I'm, no, no, no. What's the word that I use? I can't think because I started drinking. Um, compassionate? No. Passionate? Passionate. Yeah, let's just take the calm out. I'm passionate about it, what I do because, <laughs> um, because number one, I'm in QA. So they're more focused on numbers. Yeah, yeah, You're focused they're numbers. On I'm focused on quality. So I've been labeled aggressive. And me focused. and another girl, we were labeled aggressive. And we're not aggressive. We're just passionate about what we do because what we're in healthcare. So we have to make sure what goes out is right. Is right. No, I get it. I'm in QA yeah. too. And um, I've been told by different departments, QC, um, CAM, like whatever you want, I can be intimidating and I do come off as aggressive sometimes. I'm like, mm, not aggressive. But sometimes I can be. I let it be known that I really don't give a shit. They, like, the way you see me here is the same way I'm at work. There is no fucking filter. There's no on and off. There's no... Like, except for my outfits and my clothes, like, I dress a lot bummier and my hair is usually not fucking done. I just don't give a shit, mm. but... Some pretty people do get special treatment in society because of their looks. That is true. That is true. Like, when you're getting into a club, they'd rather let the pretty people in than the ugly one. Well, yeah, because when they take their pictures and they promote their clubs, they don't want an ugly-looking person in their pictures. They want pretty people. Yeah. Yeah. But there's good and bad with that as well. I as do with agree. Everything. As with everything else. All right. If you want to keep commenting on this subject, like if something pops in your head, go ahead and throw it in our comments. Send it in our inbox. We will go ahead and um, mention it. But we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Come on, come on, juice. Good, good, good. <laughs> to the next topic. To the next topic. Um, let's go to is sharing your. Uh, accomplishments bragging um it all depends on how you go about it okay that's I feel like it I mean you busted your ass and you worked hard for it and you did it and you accomplished it by all means announce it you deserve the recognition whatever you did the work now if you're out to dinner and they're talking about TV and all of a sudden you find yourself interjecting like oh yeah I did this or we're talking about something that no, nothing related, and you find a way to interject your accomplishment. At this point, you're just bragging. Yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah, I also feel um, it has to do with who you're with, who you're surrounded with, who you're eating with, um, how they're taking it. Is it bragging? Like who you're surrounding yourself with. If the people that you're embracing with are your true friends, they're not going to consider it bragging. They're going to consider it as you got in there, you've worked hard for it um, in the beginning. Now, if you're three years into it and you're still talking about the same damn thing you've already done and you've been doing, now it's you're continuing, you're continuing to brag about what you've been doing. And the other thing is also how how you go about it. Because if you're sitting there like with your two friends or whatever, and you're just like, oh, well, I did it. And, I, and it wasn't that bad. You could do it too. Yeah. Like, well, not everyone has the same mentality or same hardships or whatever. Or the same goals. Exactly. What you're doing, I may not want to do. Exactly. Yeah. So, but if you're not mindful of how you also just uh, present that, it could be considered bragging. So like, oh, well, that wasn't that hard. I don't know why you're having so much trouble. Yeah. Now, come on. Instead of being like, oh, what are you, how, what is your difficulty? I, like, I've done it. Let me try to help you. Right. Like, how you present it can also be seen as bragging. Right. And let's just say, um, if you have a friend, if you've done it and you have a friend that's trying to do it too, don't brag about what, it, it is bragging, if you've already done it and your friend's trying to do it because let's get something straight there's so many people in this world that you're obviously not the only one that's 
doing it. Okay, Other people are doing it as well. Yeah. Where one eats, ten more can eat. If you're helping that person try to excel as well, and you're continually continuously trying to say, well, I've done it this way, I've done it this way, I've done it this way, I've done it this way. Now you're just trying to boost yourself. And here's the thing. Where can I, it's like you just said, where can I help you? And here's the thing also to take into consideration, because um, this is a problem I've had, not like in regards to bragging accomplishments, but you know how you vent to your friends and they're like, well, I've done this and I did that. My sister's is one of those, where when she's telling you something, it's I've done this. She's not trying to brag. It's just that she's trying to relate to you by her experience. It also takes about, like, you trying to... If you guys are friends, then hopefully you know what type of friend they are and how they're going to present that. But if you don't know somebody, your eyes is going to seem very full of yourself. Right. Instead of you coming off and you're trying to, like, empathize and relate and you're trying to show them that you've been through it, it's going to come off as, like, well, you think you know better or your way is better or whatever as opposed to being like, well, have you tried this? Like, for me, this worked. Instead of, like, I, 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 I. Like, if it's supposed to be about someone else, there shouldn't be so many eyes. Right. Um, I don't think really successful people don't even mention their accomplishments. I agree and I disagree with this statement. Successful people don't mind mentioning it if they're trying to help someone else succeed as well. If you're very successful and you're keeping it to yourself, I feel like you're trying to be greedy with it. My opinion, if you're successful and you want to see your true friends or your someone else grow as well, you are going to um, share tips to help them grow as well. Um, when you keep it to yourself, you're like, nah, I busted my ass. You're going to bust your ass too. And I say this because the company I work for, um, they, do, well, let me rephrase that. The company I used to work for because we were bought out, the original owner, he didn't believe in um, education assistance. He said, my parents did not help me with education assistance. Therefore, I'm not helping you. I busted my ass. You can bust your own ass by yourself. Did I agree with that? Absolutely not. Especially if I'm going into the healthcare industry and I'm planning on staying within the same company. But if my ideas will get you farther in expanding your company, why can't you help me a little bit as far as my education? Now, I get where he's saying from where he's saying I didn't get the help. I busted my ass on my own. But if you can help somebody else out and become, if you're a multimillionaire, if you can become a billionaire and help me out and I can help you out, if one, one back, wait, one back scratches another, let's help each other out. Now we're bought out, they have that mentality. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And they have that now. So I believe in that. Tell me your tricks and I'll help you when I um, succeed. You know, so we'll help each other out. But not everyone view is a, views it like that because they view it exactly. as um, security. Like, not even about like, well, I busted my ass, you should do the same. Sometimes people just hold on to the knowledge because they're like, well, I figured this out through hardship and no one helped me. But if I share it, then you're going to get catch up or get ahead of me. I'm not going to share it. Like, you're going to have to figure it out on your own and fall and bust your ass before you get there. But I'm not asking you exactly what you did. You're giving me tips. Like, hey, maybe if you did this a little bit different, it might help you out. Some people won't even give the tips because they still see it as they don't, they want to help you. They just don't want you to get further than them. Right. See, and I don't agree with that because it's like, I want you to do good, but I don't want you to do better than me. It's basically that, yeah. Exactly. Um, I don't think... Uh, telling someone how you did things and telling what you did is different. I get it. And it's like I just explained right now. I will give you tips, but I won't tell you exactly how I did it. I'll give you some tips. There, that's where the difference is. That's how I see it. That's just me. I just can't... Um, I guess there's like a saying... That my mom said, where one eats, two eats. Where two eats, three eats. I just can't sit at a table by myself 
and eat all the food that there is knowing that there's other people starving. It's just, yeah. that's just how I was, I was personally raised. I don't know. No, that makes sense. I mean, like I said, I feel like it definitely comes off as how you present it. That's where the bragging comes. It's differentiated in. Like, yeah, you can celebrate yourself. There is nothing wrong with celebrating yourself and the hard work and your accomplishments. No one's going to knock that from you. Well, hopefully not if they're your friends. But, you know, they're going to know, like, gonna, if they've been with you, they're going to see, like, oh, shit, she's been doing this for, like, the past 20 years and she finally got there or whatever. They're going to celebrate you. They're going to celebrate with you. If now, they're your true friends. Yeah, because some people just are just evil, but that's neither here nor there. But now, if after you reach your goal, you're just like, I did this, and you're not even acknowledging the people that helped you because, hey, yeah, it took you 20 years to get to where you're at, but... In order for you to focus on those whatever things you had to do in those 20 years, you're not going to mention the people that helped you cook or helped you pick up your kids or helped you whatever so that you can focus on your main goal. You didn't do it by yourself. You're the one who reached it. Yeah, it's your title. But you had assistance. You had community. You had a village to help you so that you can reach that plateau. And you, for you not to acknowledge, you're bragging because you're like, I did this. And mm -hmm. you're portraying and presenting it to everyone else like, oh, it's all you and no help. And no one else was there then. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I I definitely don't. You have to acknowledge the people around you who supported you when you did not have anything. To me, that is now bragging. And you have to remember, it's like you just said right now. It takes a village. You cannot say, I started this on my own when you had people that were behind you pushing you forward. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, yeah, you can mention your accomplishments. And I don't think it's bragging. And your true friends should not sit there and say, oh, it's bragging. No, they should be the first ones standing and clapping because they're your true friends. Absolutely. And they should encourage you and give you ideas and push you forward. And and it's not, I, I said in the beginning, they should continuously do that if they're your true friends. It's all who's behind you um, throughout the whole process. Now, if you get to a certain point and you're continuously saying, Oh, it's me. Oh, it's me. Oh, it's me. And the entire time you have this team behind you. What does that say about you as a person? You got comments? Oh, do I? Um, pointing someone in the right direction is way different than giving them your personal notes. Yep. You can point them in the right direction and they do their own research. Research. <laughs> You were just yeah. coming hard, huh? No, it's because I got to drive. That's what it is. I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree with that. <clears throat> it's like I said, you could give them tips. You don't have to give them exactly what to do. Here, you want to do this. You want to go do this. You can tell them, hey, maybe you want to look into this. If they don't look into it and they don't do their own research or how to do this or then how they to do that, it bad enough. they don't want it bad enough. Yep, you said it right there. You're not going right to do there. the work for them. You'll help them, but right. you're not going to do the work for them. And I do agree with that. Like, I can tell you, like, hey, maybe look into, like, small business loans. But I won't tell you. Wells Fargo has a great program for small business loans. Maybe you want to call them. Here's the number, 1-800-SMALL-BUSINESS-LOANS. You can give them tips to move forward because you've already done it. You already know. You know what to look for. Blah, blah, blah. But you can give them tips to move forward because it's like I said, oh, it's, it's not even what I said. Um, um, my nail, she's not my nail tech. She's my friend. She's my friend. Um, she's constantly telling me, um, I, like when I first started my own business, um, I didn't want to ask nobody for anything, but I would constantly think like, where do they go for this? Where do they go for that? I need some like help. And I would Google stuff. I would look on Amazon myself. But, uh, you know, I was like, there has to be a way to look for, like, cheap, cheaper stuff in bulk. And I didn't want to ask because it's like, I don't want to copy. And then my friend, she would be like, ask me all the time. And I'm like, but I don't want to copy. She's like, it's not copy. She's like, I help you. You help me. We go forward. We do this. Girl empowerment. And I didn't, I never looked at it that way. 
And she was like, you have to look at it that way. She was like, do you honestly think I'm ever going to be in competition with any other nail tech? And she was like, I can't service the whole world's nails. She was like, there's not enough of me. She was like, so if I can help somebody else out, absolutely. She was like, I give classes for like um, lashes, you know, nails or whatnot. She was like, you know how many people there are? She was like, I can only do like five people or six people a day, their lashes. You know how many people there are? She was like, so if I help somebody else out, it's better for them, it's better for me, it's better for everybody. She was like, there is no competition in this industry. And I never looked at it like that because I was always thinking like, I don't want to copy, I don't want to copy, I don't want to copy. At the end of the day, it's not copy. If we can help each other out, we all grow. And I never really looked at it that way. I always looked at it from a different point of view until she kept telling me, where one eat, two eat, three eat, four eat. And we all just grow, especially when you're a minority too, because we want to help each other grow. So it's definitely not saying, hey, let me give you step-by-step -step instructions. Let me give you some tips on how to grow. And it was that simple. And I, it took a lot for me to understand. Hello. Um... Most people nowadays want to see you doing good, but never better than them, which I think is wrong because everyone can eat. And I agree. I agree with that statement. And it's all too. It's people who you associate with. It's like if you associate yourself with people who are like, yeah, you can do good, but I don't want you to do better than me. It says a lot about them. It says a lot about you as well. Like, what friends do you carry? Mm -hmm. I kind of kind of don't agree. Like, sometimes it's not even like the friends that you have. If you're worried about doing better, it, your upbringing. Like, if you grow up in a household where it was your parents made it a competition between you and your sibling, you're gonna carry that mentality as you grow into an adult. That's true. I do agree like, with there's that. Too much. Like the environment, the factor, like. If you've been into sports your whole life and everyone's been pushing like, oh, you need to win, you need to be, do better, you need to be the best, you need to be the best, you, be, you need to be the best, you grow, that mentality sticks with you even as an adult. Like, I need to be the best, I need to be the best, I need to be the best. Um, I agree to a certain point with that because you can break that generational curse. You can, but it's a lot of work and most people don't acknowledge it. It's shadow work. You need to sit down with yourself and most people can't be by themselves. So if right. you can't sit with yourself and your thoughts, then how do you expect to break it? Therapy. I know we've had a we we've had a show with like therapy and getting therapy for yourself. It's therapy. It's looking at what you want and what you know you need to break and getting the help that you need for it. If you know that you were raised a certain type of way but you don't want to be that way, get the help that you need for it. But that's the thing. It's easier for someone else from the outside looking in to realize that you have these toxic traits or whatever or these traumas or these negative thoughts that you carried and brought with you from your childhood because looking at yourself inward, you might just think that's normal because that's what you grew up with. That's so true. So unless someone points it out, even if someone points it out, you might still not agree with them. Um, It's easy to get caught up in the competition bubble. It sure is. It sure is. It's definitely not easy. Not a lot of people can accept that they need to change. Yeah. I agree with that. There's a lot that goes into, like, your accomplishments. It's not just, like, the whole bragging, the studying, the hours, the research. Like, But it does take a lot of time. But if you want it that bad and you want to succeed, you're going to do it. It takes sacrifice. It takes a lot of sacrifice. But here's the thing. A lot of people, especially like when COVID hit, people started opening their own business, whatever. And I'm all for it. I'm not complaining. But people just jumped in blindly, like no research. Like, mm -hmm. You can't just do it because you think it's easy. You need to do your homework first. Yeah. I mean, granted, if it works for you, great. I'm not knocking it. But realistically, you should always do your homework. Like what taxes are involved, what steps you need to take. Like you should always know like. Try to have your ducks in a row, basically. Your eyes out of your T's cross, everything perfect. Because when you should you get audited or investigated, you want to be able to be like, I did this and this is all in order. I'm not going to have to get a lawyer or try to prove or explain. Everything's 
done because you either shadowed, mentored, studied, researched, like you had all covered. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's get to let's get to our next subject. All right. Well, well, well. I think this is the topic everybody has been looking forward to. Let's bring out our little demonstration. <laughs> this was directed to us women. It is. We need to learn how to measure a penis. All right. I'm going to stop you right there. Women. How many men have you met that said, I need you to measure my penis? Um, can you please refer to our inbox? What is it? A penis? It's the male organ. You know, we, we're female. You're male. We have vaginas. You have penises. So to answer your question, that's what it is. But I'm being serious. It's like women should learn. Who in the world is like, well, before we get to it. I need you to measure my shit. Well, like, who the... Okay, have you ever gotten into bed and someone was just like, here, you, let me pull out the tape measure well, before let, we get to it? Let's just... Hold on, wait a minute. Maybe this topic... Oh, wait. I brought out an extra ball. Ball. Ball because it's one. Sorry. That one fell as I was trying to put it... I meant the topic, Sangana. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was just answering your question. It was submitted. It was submitted. Maybe some... I mean, it's leaking. I think the balls is leaking. But anyways, I did my best. And I'm sorry, I wasn't going to bring out an actual... um, Like a, like an actual penis from like a sex shop. Way. Yeah, because I didn't want... This topic was submitted, an actual topic. So I didn't want it to go off course. I wanted to stay on course for this because I didn't want um, nobody on here to. Um, I didn't want to get out of character with anybody. If she you didn't want anyone to try to cross the line and be extra sexual for no goddamn reason. Yes, that's it. Um, and me have to get out of character, you know. But anyways, it was an actual topic that was submitted, but measure it how length or width. Well, we're actually gonna get into both of those topics tonight because no, I but feel before like before we show you, can you guys tell us how you measure it? Yes, because I feel like whoa, what's leaking? I think the tomatoes. The tomatoes are leaking. Um, I as I was trying to put one in, it fell. She so, cracked the ball. Yes, I cracked it. Um, how how do you measure it? Because I feel like there's no. Do you measure? Okay, let me just. All right, this I have a question for all women. I'm sorry. How many times have you had to measure a penis? I haven't had to measure one. Me neither. That's I don't why think. I, I I'm. It's either a pencil or a sausage. Right. It's either girth or length. But my thing is, why are men? Why are men so fixated on length? The porn industry. Seriously, it's a porn industry. Explain that more, please. Because Explain they... more to our viewers. <laughs> so it is said that, you know, length is fixated more because when porn shows it, you can, if your penis is small, you're not going to be able to see like when you're, you're not going to stick outside of her. Okay. Because if you're too big, you can't fit in her. Appropriately. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so let's get something straight, guys. It doesn't matter the length. I mean, it does matter the length to a certain point, but it does not have to be 10 feet long. Let's talk about girth. I think the biggest one is like, at least comfortably for a porn industry is like 13 inches or something like that. Yeah, but let's just, let's talk about that realistically. <laughs> it, it could be like 13 in, inches long, but what you're doing, <laughs> what you're doing is you're hitting the uterus time after time again. That doesn't, it's, that's not... Really, for most women, it's not pleasurable. It's not pleasurable for most women. All you're doing is hitting that and bruising it. Now, what is sexual and very most comfortable for a woman is actually the girth, how thick it is, because the women's sexual pleasure is the expansion of 
the vagina was if you did not know that. I mean, I know I'm not quite sure if sex ed gets into that in high school. Okay, don't ask me. I can't remember. That was like I can't. Re- I can't remember. I graduated in 2002. 2004 for me. So I'm old than you. Jesus. Anyways, not that much. Two years. Yeah, not that much. Anyways, so we brought out a banana and tomatoes to for the balls. Okay, you're not going to measure your balls because, number one, the balls don't go inside of the vagina. And if you're shoving your Actually, balls inside of a vagina... Some people do. That's stupid. Some people do. That's, that's why I had to stop you. Sorry. I would <laughs> some hope people not. Do. You see? That's some too much pe- for high school. <laughs> um, some that's, people do, though. But see, that's stupid because that must be a fetish because that now is not something that normal people would, in sex would do. That's a fetish. If you want to stuff some balls, I just spit a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not, I didn't even catch it. If you want to stuff your balls into a vagina, that's a fetish. That's not what normal sex. We're just talking okay, about normal sex. Okay, let's be honest, sex. but is that not the same concept as fisting? That's fisting, but that's a fetish. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's not what normal people do in sex. We're talking about normal sex here. Just like missionary. Just missionary. Okay, just, just missionary. If you want to talk about fisting, you can put that in a topic, and I don't want to really talk about fisting. But if that's what you want to <laughs> talk like, about. I don't even know what we would talk about that. Do Fine. not put fisting That is too topic. much for high school. Do and not. That's, and that's not what we want to teach our children, because I have a high schooler. Well, he's graduating now, but let's not put that in as a topic. Please do but, but literally, you don't want to take two balls and stuff it into a vagina. Okay? So we don't want to measure that. And anyways... The topic is measuring a penis. Penis and balls or scrotum, if you want to be technical, that's what it is. We're not measuring the scrotums. Because if you measure the scrotums, then you want to go around the scrotum. You don't want to measure that with your penis. Vanilla shit. Exactly. Vanilla shit. So, okay. Leave the balls out. So, what you want to do, can you please hold my penis? Yes, ma'am. Anything for you. Thank you. So, <laughs> balls goes at the bottom. <laughs> so what you want to do, okay, ladies? Because it seems like men are fixated. You're gonna have to do it on the outside, so yeah. they can see. Yes. So what you want to do is you want to come on the outside of the penis, not the balls, and you want to measure. It's nine and a half. Nine and a half. Now, if your mother did not have you circumcised, you are not going to measure the foreskin because that foreskin can sometimes stretch longer. You're going to measure yourself when you're hard. You're not going to measure yourself when you're limp, number one. And technically, depending on how you do it, most places will tell you to do it to your pelvic bone because you have spat there, so you press down all the way to yeah, your pelvis but, bone. Yeah, but not. But if your penis doesn't reach your pelvis bone, you're not going to measure to your pelvis bone. So then where the hell is your penis attached to? Your penis is the penis itself. I know, but the, when most of them measure... If your penis ends, that's where the, it ends. Yeah. You're not going to keep going to the pelvis bone because you don't insert your pelvis bone into the girl's vagina. No, but... You, you, okay, you know how you have your fat... That you know, like we're not doing this here. Yeah, like, let, <laughs> like sorry. let's just say I can't. Oh, well, I was like, there anything I'm fucking crazy. The tomatoes done. White, so I can. I can, it, it okay. Over my hands. <laughs> if the penis is done, and the, here's your pelvis well, bone. Well, not the pelvic bone there. I meant like right here. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. You can. So if here's your pelvis bone and your penis ends here, I'm not gonna go. Oh, well, here's my well, pelvis bone. Like, right going. here, you know how you like to have that bone right here, that growing yes. bone? You measure, you push down to here and then go. Yeah, out. but if your penis isn't there, you can't keep going. No, but because you have fat there and hair and stuff, that will measure with your thrust and movement. So that's why some doctors will measure that. Yes, but technically, if that doesn't go into the vagina, you don't want to measure that. The doctors will. That's what the I'm doctors don't know. The <laughs> okay. doctors don't know. The, technically... Technically, you want to, but that's not technically the penis. Fuck it, we're not measuring these men's penises. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I said. I said, what person submitted this topic, and how many times are you asking these women well, to measure your penis? We're not I, doing that. But I will measure, and if it's this big, I'm gonna be like, excuse me, sir, it's four and a half. Well, actually, it's four and a half. 
It is I'm not measuring your pelvic bone because your pelvic bone ain't doing shit for me. I have a question to whoever submitted this topic. How many women do you ask to do this for you? And when they do it wrong, do you correct them? And do you show them how to do it? And is it such a big thing that you had to submit this as a topic? That's Let's medical though. It's medical, but it's not the penis. You, the topic you asked was the penis. This is the penis. It's the part that goes into the vagina. It's not the part that's connected to your pelvic bone. Because what are you going to do? Guayalme with your pelvic bone? Actually, some people do. Just because um, most women get off clitoral. Yeah. It's not the part that goes into the vagina. I'm just letting you know how it works in real life. It's, it's the same thing. You can use your fingers to go into my... But it's not the part that I'm measuring either. It's not the penis. So if you want to be... Like, what kind of sex life do you... Do you Thank have you. to be having women measuring your penis? This is... See, here's my thing. Now, my question is, are you more are you more concerned with your length or your girth? Because your length really isn't much. It's not doing much. Because you can have a pencil... You can have a pencil going into me. But if I don't feel it, if it's not opening the vagina walls, and I'm not feeling anything... If it's not opening my vagina walls, now, what you want to measure is the girth. If it's eight inches thick, that's what you should be concerned with. Because if it's four or five, but it's eight inches thick, that is what you should be worried about. Case closed. <laughs> So it's almost like he must have a penis penis. I agree what Wendy's saying. It's the medical part they consider. So you're going to sit there and because be like. like if you're in the porn industry, that's what they consider. No lie. Medical, medical. I am no, at like, eight like, and a half. But medical, medical. I only feel four. It doesn't matter. So medical, medical. You're eight and a half. But medical, medical. I'm sleeping on you. I'm wondering why the sky is blue. Or the grass is green. You're not doing shit, but medical, medical, you're eight and a half. Whoop the fucking do. They say, actually, for the woman, the average size that is ideal for us is like six inches, but girth. Girth. You just said it. Boo-boo. It's how big. But it's not that, how long. You mean how thick, not yes. how big. But and yeah, one, that's what I meant. How, and number yeah. two, like, don't be making people feel bad. Because what if they got a skinny thing? I... I'm sorry. They can't work it out. They can't make it get bigger. It's not like they can put weights on the bitch and be like, ah, I'm going to get muscles in this bitch. But I'm just saying. <laughs> no, you can. You can put a cock ring on it and yeah, hold the blood and make it thicker. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to be enough to be fucking eight inches. But don't worry about how long it is. That's the thing. You're so fo Men are so focused on how long it is. Who gives a shit? Medically, it's eight and a half. Sorry. Because it reaches my pelvic bone. But boy, if it doesn't reach my uterus, who cares? Well, I prefer you not to be knocking on my cervix. That's all I got to say on that. But Toys. for some people, thank you. pain is pleasure. And they do like the length. They want to feel that. I guess at the end of the day, it's all on preference. Preference. Mm -hmm. It's all on preference. So my thing is, stop worrying about how long, or the girth, or whatever. Take your minds off of the fixation of what is this, what is that, what is that, and worry about what is pleasuring the girl. Just focus on the moment. And read body language for whether she's enjoying it or not. Because if you're paying attention, you'll be able to tell if she likes it or not. Or if she's faking it. Right. But, um... And then, then, then there's toys. There's a lot of toys to enhance everything that you are doing with your partner. But I really want to know, like, was this really... Like, how often do you ask your women to measure your penis? And is it, like... Really big that you need to have a measure. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Listen, I have so many questions. Somebody just call me up and down. 
But now I was agreeing with you and saying what Wendy was saying is medical. And when talking size, that part doesn't count. <laughs> She's like, bitch, stop getting into your feelings. <laughs> My bad. I take it back. You see, the problem is they're coming in as we <laughs> start worrying about how long you last. Stamina. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, that's yes. an important one. Yes. Yes, I agree with that. I do agree with how long you last. No one wants to be in it for five minutes. No. Like, Damn, you done? Three minutes, you're done. You're like, fuck. Well, let me pull out my toys. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is, I, I, I do agree with that. You have to read the body language of the person that you're with. Forget about the size. Forget about all of that. If you know that you don't last long, uh, start with toys. If you know that you're not long, but you're thick, work with that. If you know you're long and you don't have thickness, work with that. There's so many different things. Take your mind off of what if. Get away from the porn industry because you have to remember that's fake. There's so much editing going on with that. Surgeries. Yes. I don't know about surgery. Well, but, I mean, if you can get a vagina rejuvenation and become a virgin again. There's a lot. You could get a a a, a penile um, extension. Yeah, <laughs> but um, the mm -hmm. point is, everyone's different. It doesn't matter how many partners you have, mm -hmm. or multiple partners at the same time. No judgment. Whatever floats your boat. Each one is going to be different. So you have to be attentive because pleasing the one doesn't mean, doing the same thing to one doesn't mean it's going to please the other as well. So whereas the one might care about girth, the other one might like length because they like the pain. Yeah, I'm about. I'm about pleasing my partner as much as I can. And that's what it's about. I don't concern myself with the rest. That's what it's about. You have to take in consideration that connection that you have with that person when you're in an intimate situation. Forget about the rest. And I'm sorry. I really hope I was able to show you how to measure a penis. And I'm pretty sure us women know how to measure a penis. I'm going to tell you right now, if anyone asks me to measure a penis, unless I'm getting paid for it, that shit is not fucking happening. And that's like for work, not because I just want to be like, oh, I want 20 bucks, let me measure your penis. Do you want to put your cash app out there? <laughs> I'm not measuring penises unless it's in front of like hundreds. Do you want to put your cash yeah, app out there? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if I want to touch our guests, our viewers. No offense to y'all, but I don't want to be back next but week. Like, I don't want to be back next week like, oh, damn. I saw his penis and now I gotta touch him again. No, what if you have like foreskin? That doesn't bother me. Sorry. As long as they clean it right, doesn't bother me. <laughs> la, 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 la. Okay, anyway. And when it gets the <laughs> second <laughs> one, the session's now over. We measured a penis. Don't she measured a penis. Don't include the balls, don't include the foreskin. Well, you're going to measure when you're hard. When you're hard, the foreskin's going to be back. It's not going to be forward. Well, you never know because we just let them know that it has to be hard. You can't do it soft. Unless you're doing like a before and after lip and hard. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. What, what's it for? Your profile, your portfolio. No judgment. Whatever. Your Tinder. Wakala. <laughs> well, anyways... I'm going to go have a fruit and vegetable salad. <laughs> she will eat the penis. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, Guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for keeping it professional tonight. We hope you enjoyed what we did. This educational part of it. Yes. I think this is the most educational and hands-on you will see us. Be hopefully. <laughs> we hope you have a great night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I'm going to wait till he turns that off. I ain't stupid. You're not going to play me. You're not going to play me. <laughs>